all ye nations, sing to the Lord God, the God of might and power. Hallelujah. I said, clap your hands and give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Let the whole world hear. Hallelujah. Let the whole world know that Jesus Christ Lord. is Lord. 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 He's an awesome God. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord once again as we get ready to dive into the word. Come on, greet someone and say greetings in Jesus' name. Come on. Just for that one second. Come on, God bless you. To all you listening and watching here and around the world, we greet you in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. Ooh. Hallelujah. God bless you too. All of you God's people in your respected places, Shalewa and I send greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We greet you all who are watching live and those who will be watching. Amen. Amen. To Apostle Dean, God bless you. God bless Pastor Carey, hallelujah, God bless you. Brother Andy, hallelujah. And Minister Del Reese, hallelujah. Malik, the saints of God, the people of God. All of you in your respective places, give God glory, honor, and praise for being in the house just another day. Amen? Hallelujah. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so delighted. Thank you, Apostle, for that powerful prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. What I love about the Lord. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. What I have a challenge with is that, uh, hallelujah, that's not like this man of God. He could, hallelujah, an apostle can sit with another apostle. And have fellowship with the saints yes. of God. Amen. Amen. That's where the Lord is bringing the church. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. What a time. Thank you, Lord, for an awesome time. Amen. As we come into 2020. Amen. Amen. And moving forward. Hallelujah. What a year it has been already. Everything that is going to shake will shake in 2020. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is conforming yes. his people. Amen. That's right. We are in a very serious time. Grab your Bibles. Today we are going to be talking about kingdom, developing a kingdom identity. Amen? Write that. Say developing, developing. A, kingdom a kingdom identity. Now the kingdom of God is very powerful. It is the rulership of Christ Jesus in the heavens and the earth. And Jesus is establishing his kingdom in the earth. Why is he doing that? We're going to go through that this morning. If I were to give you the first verse, it would be Matthew chapter 24. Amen. Matthew, say Matthew. Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. And we're going to read down to 15. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> because the kingdom of God his message must be taken to the nations. Jesus has a specific assignment. Even though he's God, he's continuing that in and through the church and through the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Sadly, there are a lot of distractions because Satan has an agenda too. Yes, sir. Let me tell you about the kingdom of Jesus, then I can tell you about the kingdom of Satan. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 1, read, if you have it together... And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another, that it shall not be thrown down. And how many know the same thing Jesus prophesied happened? Yes, sir. Amen. Sure did. After Jesus was crucified, a few years afterwards, the Roman Empire came in and destroyed Jerusalem and burnt it to the ground. Yes, sir. Sure did. So not only was he prophesying, he was prophesying. How many know Jesus is a true prophet? Yes. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and at the end of the world? How many know that even the disciples 2,000 years ago were just like us? Yes. We want to know what are the signs of dry man be. Yes. We want to know when the end shall come. Now, what should they ask him? Two things. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Two different things. Mm -hmm. The sign of Jesus coming and the end of the world. Yes. 
You know what? I am very concerned about all these things that you see in social media. Look at Jesus. His disciples came to him simply. What should be the signs of their coming? What should be the end of the world? He answered it. Yes. Come on. Come on. Help me. We don't have to live. We, we serve a God who answers when we ask him questions. Yes, sir. If you want to ask Jesus uh, what's going to happen tomorrow, he'll tell you. He's not afraid to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. That's why I have a challenge with people when, when, when a prophet prophesies and they make him a hero. That's what prophets are supposed to do. <laughs> Amen? That's right. Yeah. Don't make prophets heroes because they said something. Oh, a storm is coming and it came. All right. A tsunami is coming. Yeah, and it came. All right, praise God. Would you want a medal for that? That's it. Yeah. That's the job. That is your job. Apostles lay foundation, apostles build churches, apostles uh, govern the house of God, they equip the saints, they prophesy, that's their job. Yes, sir. I don't know why apostles on, the, on social media want to be exalted. Mm -hmm. No, sir. In the city, in the nation, they want to be worshipped and bowed down. They want to be idols and stars. That's right. I don't know why. Prophets want to be rewarded. If you prophets, that's your job. Look at someone say, that's your job. That's your job. Uh-huh. That didn't come with no reward from man. Now, if you want to bless a prophet, praise God. But don't expect no reward. That is your job from the Lord. That's what he called you to do. Yes, sir. That's what Jesus did. He didn't, and he, he told you what's going to come. If you're a pastor, your job is to shepherd the flock. That's it. Love the flock. Shepherd them. Care for them. Nurture them. Be a caregiver. That's it. Serve faithfully in the house of God. What you want a reward? Yes, sir. No, sir. Let me tell you something. 2020 and beyond, God is not looking for people who want franchise and medals no, sir. That's it. and accolades That's it. None. and awards by the government and knighthood. No, sir. And you can keep your knighthood. You'd rather be a child of God than a knight. Amen. 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 What do you want? For man's applause, huh? Mm -hmm. That's your job. Go ahead, preacher. You're an evangelist. You're supposed to win souls. Yes, sir. Too many people have the title evangelist. Ask them when they win one soul in the last 10 years. Ask them to tell you how many souls they won over the last 10 years. Yes. Don't even go. I, I gave them a, an extension. I wouldn't say over the last year. I'd say 10 years just so they can add it all up. Go ahead, Make it look a little good. If you're a teacher, you teach. Mm -hmm. I was sharing with my wife the other day. The Lord spoke to me last month. And I had some things. The Lord was pouring out. And I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? He said, you were a teacher, right? I said, yeah. He said, did I make you a teacher? He said, yeah. He said, okay, now go to school. When you taught at high school, how many classes you taught a day? Sometimes four or five classes a day. Those who were teachers. Five days a week. Sometimes 20 sessions of classes a week. And I'm like, oh my God, I repent. Say, Lord, I repent. I repent. We won't have one little Sunday message for an hour or two mm -hmm. and think that's it. <laughs> then when I went to college, you have, you have, you, you have a one class is seven hours, sometimes six hours a week. That's just for one class. Mm -hmm. If you have five classes, you're doing five times, sometimes six, sometimes 25 to 30 hours just for what, 15 credits. For three months, and I keep rolling over. Wow. You have lectures. I'm like, man, the church need to upgrade. Twice a week for one hour or two, and people tired. But yet we'll sit in high school, primary school, college, university for hours. 30 hours in the class, and another 30 to 40 out studying. In a week. And I said, Lord, we I have to repent yes, because sir. this is not where you want us to be. We cannot become kingdom. Then we want a double blessing from the Lord. It's not going to work like that. No, sir. The Lord is sitting on his throne and he said, let me see where your priorities are. Yes, sir. If you're a teacher, teach. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Come on, that's my point. Amen. Whatever office you are in, execute it daily, faithfully unto the Lord. Yes, sir. <clears throat> So Jesus asked them, and they asked them, and Jesus said, what did Jesus do in Matthew 24 and 4? And Jesus answered and said unto them, he can tell you, take heed that no man, what? Deceive you. Point number one. 
You need an identity in the kingdom of God because number one, Jesus is the king of this kingdom. Yes, sir. Secondly, he said, take heed, no man deceive you. Great deception is in the earth like never before. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> He's talking about what was happening then at that time. He's talking about what was going to happen throughout the age. He's talking about what's going to happen now. He's going to talking about what's going to come prior to his coming and the end of the time. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Sure did. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, what? I am Christ and shall deceive many. That is two parts. Number one, people are going to come saying they are Jesus Christ in the flesh. Mm -hmm. You were listening to... <clears throat> A, a, a powerful teacher, and do you know, he said that after Jesus died, a few years from Jesus' death to, to a few hundred years afterwards, there were a number of people who came to Jerusalem professing to be the Messiah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes, Jewish scholars wrote that. Oh. There are people today professing to be Christ mm -hmm. in the earth. Yeah. Besides professing to be the Messiah himself, there are many who are coming in the name of Jesus and are not a part of him. That's another thing what I mean. Many shall come and say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I was talking to a minister from an African nation yesterday. As we were praying and talking, they were holding a kingdom apostolic conference in that area. And so I was on live on Skype talking to the leaders at that time. <clears throat> and they said there were some people who came into that country under the name of prophets prophesying. Then they turned around and started selling drugs to the people. What you say? So the people were very suspicious of prophets now in that country. <laughs> when we were in a certain African country a few years ago, we were in South Africa, they were spraying people with bug spray. <clears throat> they had the members eating grass. Hallelujah. The things that people are doing in the name of the Lord is crazy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Deceive. For there sh you shall have wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. These things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. For nations shall rise against nation, and what? Kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. What are we seeing all throughout the earth? Mm -hmm. Yes, Famine. Yes, Jesus sir. said this 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. How can something be so accurate? Because it's true. It's the Lord. Amen, right. Apostle? Yes, sir. <clears throat> there should be pestilences. You know mm -hmm. what pestilences is? Coronavirus. Mm -hmm. That's a pestilence. Yeah, it's an organism. That Jesus didn't ever say a bacterial outbreak, a viral outbreak. He could have said it in detail, what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. But he left it for us to study and to show ourselves approved. Pestilence is we are having TB outbreaks in the world like we never saw it before. Mm -hmm. I was reading a health article yesterday that the super strain of STD um, uh, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, have risen across America. Oh, yeah. Three million infected. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? That's reported. Yes. That ain't the ones that went and didn't get reported. <clears throat> right. Yes, sir. Can you imagine that amount of young people, not only young, you know, all ages. And you, I, we have a social worker here. You wouldn't like to know the numbers here. I wouldn't say it nationally or internationally. Look at Sub-Saharan Africa. Largest rate of HIV region in the world. Look at through the Caribbean. Look at Southeast Asia. Prostitution. India, Bangladesh, Bangkok, Thailand. It's high. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pestilences. Look at the Ebola outbreak. Then there was SARS. Now this new thing, coronavirus, that if a person sneezes or coughs on someone, they can infect the other person, and the person could die within days from respiratory distress, kidney failure, I mean, and there's no cure for the thing. And what started out in China has now gone to almost 30 nations. And every country is pulling residents, including this one, who were living in the region and have to quarantine them 
put them in a special room for 14 days and pray. They don't have it. Because there's no preparation for it. China had to build a whole hospital in seven days to accommodate the cases. Yes, sir. Why? Because the thing is so contagious, there's no cure. <clears throat> no cure. Amen? Pestilences. Just when you think you've seen it all, every year, something new. Now watch what he said. And earthquakes in where? Diverse places. Earthquake felt in Nassau. If our grandparents even dreamed of that, they would have they would have laughed at it. Don't tell me not listen here. If it was that close, don't tell me it can't happen in the city. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, help me somebody! Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A few years ago it was felt in what? In Nagua? And it was over Haiti. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And my wife and I, we went on and looked at little that people know. She sent me that. I'll send it to you. We went on yeah. and, went and watched a video that showed the amount yeah. of earthquakes in the region. Yeah. Do you know there were thousands of earthquakes yeah. in this region alone? Yeah. Do you know that, that they, over Puerto Rico especially, there are hundreds, oh my, the new ones, there are hundreds over the last few decades. And they were showing with a dot where all it was. And when they looked, they started lighting up the dots all on that video. Where all over the last hundred years, thousands of them. We'll send you that. Then I searched a few months ago, earthquakes, the number of earthquakes in the world. And when you look at it, or per, per year, you would see that there are four or five thousand earthquakes every year. So you don't mind this, you, you only hear the big ones. But there are earthquakes happening. Google it when you get home. In diverse places. Mexico, they felt one in four. It was felt in Florida. Amen? In Los Angeles. They, I read something that it was up in New York, isn't it? All across Africa, Europe, Asia. Huh? And all these are the beginning of what? Sorrow. Say sorrow. Sorrow. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't believe the story. I know political people like to tell you these wonderful stories of it's going to get better. It's not going to get better. <clears throat> for the world, it's going to get worse. For the saints of God, it's going to get better to those who are trusting the Lord. <clears throat> if you're not pulling all your trust in the Lord, That's it's going to get tight, 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 Definitely. tight, tight. Definitely. And no prophet can prophesy otherwise. Yes, sir. So keep your money, save your time, because no prophet can tell you what God said. Otherwise, a prophet can't change the law and the times of God. Mm -hmm. No, sir. <clears throat> we keep trying to run the prophets and give us words that contradict with what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. The word of God is conditional. Yes. If you do this, I will do this. If you obey the Lord our God, then I will bless you. If you turn from your wicked ways, then I will heal the land. If you repent, I will forgive you. If you confess, I'll save you. Conditions. Yes, sir. I don't know where we get in this country from that we can do whatever we want to do and then God's word is going to magically work for us. No, sir, We're deceiving ourselves. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Hallelujah! Somebody shout! I'm going to be afflicted for Jesus in the end time. Hallelujah! Are you ready? Yes, sir. Y'all went quiet. Yes, sir. I ain't getting no likes on that one. Yes, sir. I'm not getting any hearts on that one. If I say God is going to bless you and open up doors for you and favor and goodness and grace, hallelujah, it will be light up, blue, 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 finger, 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 hearts, hearts, hearts on social media. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will be booked up from now until the end of the year if I had that message. Gary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hallelujah. But in the end time, Jesus said, we're going to be afflicted for him. Glory to God. Yeah. Hey. Y'all still quiet. God, preacher. You don't want to have that, hey. God, they should deliver you up to be afflicted. That's what he's saying. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And shall kill you. Hallelujah! To be killed for Jesus! The joy. Yes, sir. Y'all want quiet on that? Yes, sir. No one wants to be killed for Jesus? Yes, sir. I love you, Lord, and die for me. <clears throat> 
And Jesus said, I'm going to make you a martyr. How about that? When you, the minute your blood is shed, the angels will come and pick you up, take you into heaven and give you a crown so great, give you a robe so magnificent, give you a seat in the kingdom of heaven that is greater than so many people because the blood that when you shed, you know the apostles shed their blood, almost all were martyrs. Yes. The heavens rejoice. They came to Jesus and said, Lord, one, two of them said, Lord, we want to sit in the seat next to you. Jesus said, listen here, you don't know what you're asking for. He said, it's a great price, in other words. And they said, oh, master. But he said, anyway, he, in fact, you will suffer what I, I suffered. Mm -hmm. And he was telling them, it's the same way I died and was crucified. Mm -hmm. You're going to die a same death. You're going to be a martyr for this gospel. Who wants to be an apostle now? Hallelujah. Everyone wants to be an apostle. No one wants to die like the apostles. Yeah. Am I saying that's the way you might go? No. But I'm not saying you might not go that way mm -hmm. in these last days. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll never happen in this country. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you know what law is on the table right now? Yeah. Mm. To shut down the church mm. of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you violate them, you'll be thrown in prison. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. She kill you. Hey! <laughs> who wants to be the prophet of God who challenges the government and the nation and Satan's power directly? Like John the Baptist. Who wants to tell the leader of the country you cannot sweetheart with your brother's wife, and it sounds like the daughter too. Because I can't see your niece dancing so much to you that you say, my God, I can give you half the kingdom. That was his niece, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Herodias? Wasn't he, didn't he take his brother's wife? And that was the brother's wife's daughter who danced for him? That was his what? Niece, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how your niece could be dancing like that with you. That sounds like incest to me. Come on, shout hallelujah. 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 And the prophet said, you are, you, you're a wicked man. I wonder how many of you will call the prime minister and say, yes, you're a good king, but that which you're doing is wrong. You know, we won't be in political favor. That's what it is. We party driven. And I've never heard so many quiet prophets in a country in all my life. <laughs> Living here. No one has the guts to say anything. A couple of years ago, they were beating it down. But when, the, when they were beating it down, when the government changed, we see all them who got committee appointments. How can the devil you be a true prophet of God? You prophesy the word of God for committee appointment, for, for chairmanship, and you use the pulpit to prophesy against one government, saying it's the Lord, when you know you're really doing it for political... Appointment! Where the true prophets? I have a problem with that. If you're going to be a prophet, you work for God. That's your job, not for man to get appointment. And even if you have one appoint me something, I'll say, no, why? I need to stay distinct. That's it. It's called integrity. That's right. Separate yourself. Right. Unless you're going to put on a neutral board that other people know it, it too, it's, it's too, too close. That's why people are messed up now. You prophesy, now you are a political appointee. Now you're going to come back to the same church and tell it where there are people who have different political persuasion. You confuse the body of Christ, man. You see the mess that's going on? Huh? When you take this office, you stand as the mouthpiece of Jesus Christ, not for political party or leadership. Man, have integrity, man. Have some integrity in God. Have some integrity in ministry, man. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, even if you want to speak out against a decision of a government or a policy, you can't because you are already compromised. Huh? You compromise. You won't keep your chairmanship. You won't keep your, your committee. You won't stay on that board. You won't keep your political appointment. And that money is sweet. You need that. You want them little perks, them little travel appointments and allowances. You can't speak what thus said the Lord. How could you? God, son. 
It's too much compromise, man. God is bigger than that. Preach. That's right. Amen. You know, if you trust God, he will take care of you so well. You've right. done one of these prophets had to go to the king. In fact, when kings wanted to give them something, they said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Abraham said, I will not take this from you. Mm -hmm. Prophets, Elijah said, I will not take your, your gold and your coin, your gifts. But his servant, what's his name? Gehazi. Gehazi, yeah. Gehazi ran Gehazi. behind him and said, the master didn't want it. I'll take it, king. Gotta get that. When prophets speak, they need to be distinct. God wants people who are distinct, mm -hmm. whose hands are pure, whose hearts are pure. Amen. You should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, if you want to be loved by everyone, guess what? <laughs> You, you, you got to watch that. If you love, I, one of the marks that I use to see if I stand in the will of God is God, how many hate me for what I said? And when those numbers go up, I feel good, you know. Yes, sir. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When those numbers go up, I feel good. Yeah, Even with family. I have some family. Hallelujah. They can't deal with me. Come on, son. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You're going to be hated. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know why you're going to be hated? Because God will start to use you to expose some stuff in your own generation. Some of you, you're too close to loved ones. You can't tell your brother and sister nothing in the Lord. Me, I can tell them whatever. No care if they like me or not. I can tell uncles, aunt, brother, sister, cousin, daddy. So I will say what God says respectfully in all times, but sometimes hard. I'll speak in the church, whether it's if no one come here, I'll preach alone. I'll put it on these social media. I declare the word of the Lord. I'm free, man. Yes, sir. Amen. Some of you, you can't tell your family nothing. Hallelujah. If I'm wrong, my wife corrects me. If she's wrong, I correct her. Some of you can't do that. Why? Mm -hmm. Hell will be in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you, 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 hallelujah. You need to stand for God. They'll love you later on. Amen. Yeah. But you got to be integrity. You got to be a person of integrity. Say, Lord, Lord give me a kingdom identity. A kingdom identity. Yeah. And I always measure this. When I leave, you ask my wife, what I live home, ask if it's. Tell me right here, come and ask her. See, I'm more concerned about how I live home and privately than coming in the pulpit, you know. Yeah. In fact, this morning, I said, she said, you're going to share? I said, no, we're going to pray. Then the Lord said, no, just Bring a word, bless the people. I'm not hot up to preach. Mm -hmm. That's it. This is one aspect yes, of kingdom living. Yes, sir. Huh? That's right. Your brother's plan is when you get up, how you operate. Hallelujah. With your wife and your family. How do you operate in your workplace? How do you operate in the city? How do you deal with business? How do you deal with people? Yes, sir. That's it. How do you do when no one else is looking and watching? How do you operate? That's where the anointing flows. That's so when right. you stand before God's people, right, Apostle? That's the right. anointing flows greater That's because right. what you lived all week is just, it's, it comes out easily. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people <laughs> struggle. No, 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 no. Amen. Demon come, we cast it out just like this. Amen. Someone sick, lay hands, get him healed just like this. Teach the word. God's people are delivered just like this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hate it. You need a kingdom identity this year. You need to be full of Christ. Because get ready. Some folk going to hate you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you 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 look, you look following Christ. You think because you follow in Christ, everyone will love you? I was deceived in that. I thought, oh my goodness. I'm loving the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. And God called me to do work. I'm going to do it. I'm going to just be loved. The devil is a liar. Every <laughs> devil in hell come out at you. Yes. Every devil! Because the devil wants to destroy your destiny. Mm -hmm. Say destiny. destiny. The devil wants to destroy your purpose. The devil wants to destroy your marriage. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about you're going to make up with your wife? The devil mad at that. Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. The devil wants you sweethearting. As long as you sweethearting mm -hmm. and live an adulterous lifestyle, as long as you shack it up, as long as uh, uh, you have no testimony, your marriage is in shambles, your family is a disgrace, the devil like that. Because yeah. you can pray all you want. You have no power. That's it. 
Amen. So if you don't have power over your own household, the word of God said, you have not, if you desire the office of bishop, you must take care of your household first. That's good. You have no power in the spirit. That's good. You think the devil fool eh? You're a wife, you don't submit to your own husband. You, you, you're a god fool. How in the world are you going to operate in the church? That's what's fooling a lot of people. You can't submit to your own husband who is your covering in the Lord. Mm -hmm. How you can go to God, you can't go to the man you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't submit to the man you see. You don't honor the man you don't see. You don't talk to the man you see respectfully and you will have talks. Come on, man. Don't mm -hmm. fool yourself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Mm. You don't love, you don't take care of your own household. How you can take care of the household of God? God can't use you. Mm -hmm. Huh? You have a wife you don't take care. You don't feed. You don't clothe. You don't take up. How you can take care of God's mm -hmm. bride Amen. if you don't take care of your own bride? Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's right. Unless it's a sweetheart in spirit. What Some people can do that. They want to take care of the, the bride of Christ. They're in church every week. Three, four times a week having church. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know some pastors, they're always in church, 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 church. And their wife abandoned. That's why the woman bitter. Come on, help me somebody. Yeah. That's why the woman angry. That's why the children are upset. I thank God for this man of God. Everywhere you see him, you see his wife. Amen? Mm -hmm. Apostle. Hallelujah. His wife ain't too far behind. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen. Hallelujah, man. Praise God. When he eats, she eats. When they move, they move. Hallelujah. When they work, they work together. They do ministry together. They travel together. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the kids right behind. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. Sometimes you feel, God, where my ministry going? God say, your ministry greater than the man who's sweethearting with my bride and have 200 people in this church. And everyone love him, but his wife whom abandoned. Mm. The woman depressed. Mm. She is hurting. She is upset with God and him. Wow. She's bitter. Bye. You all the time in the church, 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 church. You travel here, there, and leave your wife home. Come on, man. Mm. Amen. Where are you from? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, sir. Hate it. Next, Jesus said. 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended. Say offended. offended. Oh God, more offense in this hour. The Holy Ghost had to make my, he can make your skin thick. Say Lord. Lord. Make my skin, my skin. Make my skin. Thick, thick, skin. thick, 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 thick. Everything you do, people are offended. Yeah. My God, any word you say, they're offended. Hallelujah. They don't answer your call, they're offended. You don't say good morning, you forget it, they're offended. You don't follow up with everything and Christian people. Oh God, help us. Not kingdom people, I said Christian people. Yeah, that's a slight difference. That's you get it, preacher. Everyone call Christian now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everyone has the yeah. king's heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't have identity. What do I mean identity? Identify with Jesus. Though they slay him. Though they persecuted him. He said, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He was persecuted. He was rejected. He was scorned by his own. He came unto his own. And his own knew him not. But unto them that received him. To them he gave power to become the sons of God. If I can give you a hint in 2020, those who reject you, don't waste time with them in this year. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Jesus mm -hmm. said, the word of God said, he came unto his own. Say his own. Yes. Some of you this year, you can go to your own and they ain't going to receive you. Don't keep going after their approval. Mm -hmm. You waste time. You know how much time I repent of? I said, Lord, I waste a lot of time. Trying to love our family and some people. Hallelujah. They reject it. There are two people with problems in an abusive relationship. The abused and the abuser. There is something mentally wrong with someone who abuses another person. It's more than likely because they have been abused themselves. Have you checked it, right, Andy? The people who abuse other people. Sexually, mentally, physically, emotionally, or abandonment. Do you know abandonment is abuse? Mm -hmm. Oh, help me somebody. Yes, I got it. If you have a five-year-old and you leave them in a the house with no food and no water, day in and day out, you mightn't touch them. Mm -hmm. You didn't say one word to them. Mm -hmm. You know what the courts call that? Still abuse. It's called abandonment. Mm -hmm. Let me help some of you. Yes, 
That's a bad neighbor. Mm -hmm. So, 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 if you abandon abuse, so the abuser was probably abused. And then the person, I am very concerned about men and women who stay in abusive relationships. The man beats them, the man cusses them, the man cheats on them, the man do them all kind of dirty work, or the woman. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, if you're married, that's a special situation. You gotta pray and you gotta get counsel because it's it's it's, it's something's wrong with it. Amen. I talk about young, intelligent people involved with other people who destroy them and they mm. keep going back to the same relationship. They get beat every week. They get beat every week. They get beat every week. Amen. And the man telling me love them and they go back for the beating. <laughs> The woman says she loved him and she insult him, embarrass him, humiliates him every week. And he gets that's just as bad. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. So what am I saying? If, if you keep getting abused by someone and you keep going back to them, what's wrong with you? It means something in your spirit. You don't have an identity in Christ. You don't know your worth. You don't know your value. You don't know what God is calling you to do. You keep going after the same people who keep ragging you down. Mm. Some people I made up in my mind this year, I wasted no time with them. Amen? Good. The last time I talked to them, they waste my energy mm -hmm. trying to defend myself. You don't have time. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't have time this year no time. to be defending who I am. You and God, go and God. You got to keep, oh, I call. Oh, I anointed man. I trying to live for the Lord. Yes, God called me. Yes, God got a great word for me. Come on, please. Mm. Don't like what God is doing. Move on. Mm -mm. And shall betray one another. Oh, God. Woo, Jesus. If you don't have a kingdom identity, the betrayal in 2020, listen to the stories. Mm. Listen to the court system every day. Best friends calling out a friend, they get robbed and killed. You see most of the murders, they're from people who, the people know. The guy know. The deal went bad. Most domestic thing, most women who got killed, the woman was known an ex-lover, a, a current lover, mm -hmm. or the husband or the boyfriend. Most of them, that's how they got killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Betrayal, setting people up. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The setup is great. Mm -hmm. The devil is rampant. I never felt a time in my life where you and I have to pray like never before. We have to pray because the betrayal. And the scary thing is you don't know where it's going to come from. Hallelujah. That's right, preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a guy who did something. A gentleman spoke to me this weekend. The guy called himself Christian. He's a deacon in the church. Right here, big time deacon or whatever. Well known. Take the guy money. And didn't pay the bills for the thing. The man like turned off in darkness with children and everything. And he took, I couldn't believe it. I saw it with my own eyes. I, I couldn't, my, I, my mind. And I'm talking about making mistakes. I'm talking about intentionally collecting the money, withholding it from paying the light so that the power turns off. You can't miss that. And I, I, I struggle with that. But the betrayal, the betrayal is great. The betrayal is high. Say, Lord, Lord. let me not be a betrayer. Come on, say it now. Lord, Lord. let me not be a betrayer. I never betray anybody. If I ever betray anyone, please forgive me. Oh God, I hate betrayal. Amen. I hate betrayal. Yes. I, I hate it, man. It's not God. Mm -hmm. Not for kingdom people. Now the world, you know they're gonna betray you. Yes, <laughs> you with sinners, sinners don't have the spirit of God. No. They can do when you get in yeah. business, yeah. when you get in relationships, the best way the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. It had nothing to say with about relationship, you know. Yeah. Right. It didn't say, guys, don't be in a relationship with the unbeliever. No, he left it broad. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever level you are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether relationship, friendship, 
business. You got to be careful. They don't, their lives are not governed by the same principles as we are. No, sir. So yeah. if, a, if a sinner steal from you, you expect that. Yes, yeah, sir. But when you go into the business with them, or you give them a job to, 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 to do your windows, or do your light, or do your plumbing, you know they're going to teeth little something in there. <laughs> you know, you know, come on, hallelujah. You well, Come on, shout hallelujah. 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 When they get contractors, or uh, uh, building guys do stuff, I know they teeth in little something. <laughs> now, y'all might play like you ain't know that. You what know you if say? you give them money, they can teeth a couple of the plywood. They can teeth some of the sheet wrong. They can teeth some of the supplies. You got to factor that in. <laughs> you got the tile guy, you got to factor that in. When you give them the deposit, you got to factor that in. Listen here, they're going to take this, and they're going to take five other people's deposit, and then they're going to work their way on each one of them piece by piece and drive the thing out, and then ask for more money or delay a project. Mm. It's the betrayal. Mm -hmm. You got to understand it. Or they can take your deposit. So if, if, if you got a roofing job, they can take 10000 from each one of them. That's 50000 in their pocket. Then they can take two weeks to get them a little two, $200 worth and put a little piece there. Little piece. They can sit on that 50000 Huh? Mm. Yep, that's what's going on. They can sit on that and gain interest on that. Then they can piece, piece your work. And they can wait till another project thing run. Or they can overbook another project and get the extra material to put on yours. <laughs> That's how these contractors, if they don't repent, they're going to hell. Most contractors in this country go going to hell if they don't repent. Tell them I say it. Because I know what they do. I know what they do. I dealt with many of them. And I didn't know it before. That's what they do. They take money from everyone. And if they're friends with the general guy, they can stretch the thing. They can paint it up to that high and then take five weeks. And every week, you got to give them extra money. If they get to work by the day, you got to pay them extra. Pay them extra. See? See? So they rather get that $1,000 extra from you than being a person of integrity and you refer them for 10 other jobs and they make 20000 And guess what? At the end of the day, none of them never have nothing to show. You know why? There's a curse on most of these contractors. Every last one, 90% of them, I should say, that I know, yeah. are poor and have nothing to show of all the projects. Oh, I did that ability, that ability, that ability. And guess what? They break it now every week trying to get another job to make one three, four, five hundred dollars $500. You know why? They cheat from people and now a curse is on them. Mm -hmm. Every single one. Every mechanic I know, same thing. They teeth from you, rob, rob from think? God's people, and they think they're getting away with it. But guess what? Every one of their vehicles running down, and every week they got to be trying to hustle another little job here and there. Okay. It's a curse, man. When you do things God's way, he'll bless you. Amen? Amen. What am I saying? Betrayal. That's what I'm talking about. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. What's the biggest thing now? False prophets. Say false prophets. False prophets. Every single one is a prophet now. What you yes. say? This media thing you could put on live video and automatically go from a sinner to a prophet in one day. Yes. It's the scariest thing you can imagine. Hmm. A person could go from cussing, lying, and sweethearting one day to next day prophesying. And getting thousands of likes. And then getting booking appointments. What you say? <laughs> they don't go to no church. They ain't involved in no ministry. They have no history or track record in the things of God. They have no integrity. They love a right in the same back room while they in the front room on the live chat. What you say? <laughs> Just make believe. And everyone now is a prophet. Shall arise and shall. And the thing is, they're being deceived. They're possible. And people who've been around for years who have track record, they ain't want that. Mm -mm. 
They don't want to come and do Bible study. They don't want to pray. They don't want to sit under the word of God. They don't want to be faithful in the house of God. No, they want quick word from the internet. They want a quick online word. Hallelujah. And, and the people right in your country who you can see and know how they live in. And you go on TV and online and send all your money to them prophets. Wow. And when you look, they're in all kind of dirty scandal. And the people right here, you know their wife, their family, their children, you see them all around the town. They don't have time to do fool. But them sense you send off your money too and exalt and honor and lift up. They come on media and look beautiful. But they're doing some dirty things you wouldn't even imagine. Sinners ain't even doing it. Wow. False! You know what I saw the falsehood, apostle, people of God? I talk about kingdom identities, a kingdom identity. A kingdom identity. I get me somewhere. I can wrap up soon. Mm -hmm. When I saw that video online with a woman with the hand, remember that? Who they say God heal you? Did you see that one? The woman who had the hand. I saw the video. It was in Africa. They took seven, eight of them who paid the woman to falsify. She got a miracle. So these brothers will go to any extent to deceive the people, mm -hmm. to get money, and to, oh God, mm -hmm. we need, hallelujah, to pray, hallelujah, that's why I love prophets, prophets are real, when they're real, if you're a false prophet, I can talk bad, but you, that's my job, that's good. an apostle and prophet's job is to expose, Jesus said, many said they are apostles and you found them to be liars, that's right. where's that found? We can get to that. Revelation. Revelation. Turn to that, please. Saint John said, Oh, who give you the authority to judge man? Who, who, how you can say someone is a true prophet or not? Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Revelation. Is it one or two? Mm -hmm. Fire right now. Two. Huh? Two. two. Yes. Thank you, Cookie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So as you're doing, as we find this, I want you to see this. Because in these last days, you're going to have to discern everything by the word of God. Yes, you're going to have to discern, hallelujah, who is real, who is true to protect your life. Do not just sit back and think it's all right. You've got to govern your life according to the word of God. You have to develop a kingdom identity. Mm -hmm. Know who you are in Christ. Know what the word of God says. Know how to live it. Know how to operate in it. Know how to discern the times of what's happening around. Mm -hmm. You found it? Two and two. Yep. two and two. Yes. Thank you, man of God. You've been studying your Bible. Come on, give the man of God a hand clap. Amen. Eh? Since you made the right decision, I see a lot is happening in your life. <laughs> Don't go back. Yeah, Let no one take you back either. Yep. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. Come on, say bear them which are evil. <laughs> this is Jesus speaking to the seven churches. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Every one of us fall under that category as a people. That's right. Every church falls under one of these churches. Mm-hmm. God said, Jesus said, I see how you hate evil. Say, I hate evil. I hate evil. Man, some of you, you got to change your heart. I can't stand evil. Amen? I, come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why you think I preach this way? My wife will tell you, I, 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 my spirit, God, see, when you start growing in God, you think you are comfortable. No, God makes you so uncomfortable in your spirit. That's right. Tell them I'm a That's right. And some of you experience it. The deeper you get in the presence of the Lord, mm -hmm. the more when you come out, things irritate your spirit. That's right. <laughs> you drive on the road and you see young men mm -hmm. destroying your life. It just irritates your spirit. Why? It ain't you. It's the spirit of God in you, Andy. You, you go to the court and see these young men blowing their lives and you say, God, is something wrong with this. Mm -hmm. You see the sisters and you see them blowing their lives with them. Useless guys, and you say, God, there's something wrong with this. Mm -hmm. Drive in a city, and you see the drug pushers. And you, I, I don't like drug dealers, I can tell you that. I don't like abortionists. Mm. Uh uh, I can't stand abortionists because as a doctor, I cannot sit down and understand how a man or a woman can have a wife and their own children and feel it normal to kill someone else's own. Mm. 
I, I cannot see that for a thousand dollars or how much ever they dog on charge. Mm -hmm. Thousand fifteen, whatever they charge. Wow. Murderous. All. All who take lives the murderers and witches and wizards. Mm -hmm. Whether you did it, yes, you took someone to do it. You know when people come to me, I say, oh, excuse me, I don't discuss that type of thing. You have to consult someone else with that. That's no, good. Uh, no, good. no, sir. That's good. When people come to me, oh, oh no, sir, no, uh, uh. I have no, I don't, it's illegal. It's supposed to be illegal in the country. Hallelujah. I thank God for Donald Trump. You know what he did? He overthrew what Obama signed in action. Obama was forcing clinics and y'all because he's a black man no, i don't care because he's a black man the stuff that he implemented marijuana smoking legalized homosexual marriages legalized abortion legalized and y'all say he's a black man oh i don't care if he's black or white no because he's black i can celebrate him because he's president the principle of what he did violated the kingdom of god You might say what you want about Trump, but Trump went back over this last month, reintroduced prayers into school. He went back and overthrew the laws that persecuted churches from preaching the gospel. He went in and overthrew the Texas law that says they're not going to fund anybody who rejects abortion. He overthrew it. He called not a witch and a warlock into the White House. He called the church to pray for him in the White House. He was the first president in history to speak at an anti-abortion rally a couple of days ago. You want to know why God is going to acquit him? They can try all they want. You might like him. He has some personality. That's his personality. But I'm going to tell you one thing. He for the church. Come on, shout hallelujah. But that same Obama who was church, 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 church. When he got in office, it was the kingdom of darkness straight through. Yes, Amen. That's true. And the man was under a very serious ministry before this. When he got in the office, everything that was anti-God, he signed and agreed and legalized on. What did Jesus say? I see how you hate that. I want you to say, Lord, no, no, give me a hatred me for everything that's evil. For everything that's evil. Man, you can't laugh at sin. No, Folk can't be around. They don't like being around me because when they laughing at, uh -huh, oh, this one cussing, I can't laugh at that. Mm -mm. If a movie has something on it, remember growing up, hallelujah, if you a movie was on, your parents, you say, shut your eye, close your eye, get out of here, turn this TV off. You couldn't even see kissing on TV. That's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. If a kiss scene come on, my grandmother going to turn your eyes. My grandmother went to church. He was in, uh, in church and everything. But he would, close your eyes, come out here, come out here. That's true. <laughs> now sex on the TV, yes. sex on the phone. Now they old school. Come on, help me somebody. I come from the old school. I was in a hotel lobby two days ago. They have the cussing F in this. I said, uh 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 uh. I said, y'all can't play that in a public place like that. Everyone would be fine with it. But no, that when I heard that F in this blankety explicit, I told her, I meant, turn this off. Turn this off. You can't play this in a public thing. Not everyone has those values. Mm -hmm. You go to a restaurant and cussing and stuff like that. I went the same one on the corner here. Where McDonald's used to be. Sorry. And they are cussing and they, I tell them a couple times, I said, turn it off while they're ordering or let me get out of here. I wouldn't order from them no more. It's called values, man. Not everyone into cussing. Not everyone want to watch perversion on the TV. Not everyone want to see sex scene. Some people want to live pure in their minds and life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I don't laugh at the number guys holding the big conference. That ain't funny to me. When I saw that, I was very sodden. I said, the state of the country, when I drive around, I was in Nassau, when I drove around everywhere, I was embarrassed. I saw the destruction. I saw the poverty. I saw the lack. Why? From the gambling that has come into the country. You know, gambling is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Okay, how you put it? Gambling is witchcraft. Abortion is witchcraft because every time you kill that blood, a demon enters you 
And that demon want more and more blood. Mm -hmm. So you can talk about a hundred murders all you want. It's thousands of lives who died. And the blood is on this land. Mm. Blood is on this land. Mm -hmm. Evil is in this land. Mm -hmm. And people dress it up on Sunday or Saturday, whichever day, Wednesday, midday, whatever. And like, God, this evil is in the land. And we have in church. Hmm? Hmm. Laws are being put into place. But something has to rise up. In, and I said, God, I know the apostle feeling, and you too, God's people, listen and watching. Because God sent you here. You have that same stirring in your spirit. And I'm like, you cannot be a pastor in a congregation. Because if everyone was preaching against sin, the nation would be saved today, this very day. If this Sunday, when the church is packed with people, with sin and unrighteousness was exposed, and people had a real encounter with Christ Jesus, tomorrow we will have revival in this nation, and God will save this land. And everything that is tabled wouldn't be taken like a... Leave that. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot spare them which are evil. Bear who? Them. No, no, what are you talking about? You don't like this person. Jesus said you, you don't like them because they're evil. I don't like witches. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. That's my prayer every day. I have it on camera. I record it. I'll preach it every day. Anyone who's a witch, I ask Jesus kindly sometimes and intentionally for them to die. Anyone who's a warlock, I ask Jesus, please to kill them. Take them out. Hallelujah. Give them a short period to repent if they don't want to. Take them right to their place. I want warlocks to die. I want workers of the Nick. I want drug dealers to repent or God to take them out. I want abortionists to be taken out. I have it recorded. I make no apologies for that. Mm -hmm. I hate those who practice evil. The ones who oppress the poor. I, I can't stand that. Those who rob innocent people. Mm -hmm. Those who take advantage of the church. Those who mistreat children. Those pedophiles. I don't want them to live. Oh, forgive them. No, I don't want them to live. You know, those young people that die, let y'all pray for some of them to live, and they're going to mess up more people. Mm -hmm. Lord, save them. So by the time he saved them five, ten years, they mess up all kind of people, good children. Mm -hmm. You want pedophiles to live? I ain't going to touch them. I want Jesus to let them deal with them. Wow. He praying wrong. Mm -hmm. We praying a mess. The Bible says, suffer no matter what you live. There are people who are controlling the, the, the decision and the direction and the, the destinies of churches and the nation. You want them live? Huh? They bring in the nation into bondage and into sin, into idolatry, into witchcraft, into false religion. You want them to live? Mm, okay. We warfare people. We ain't no... Come to Jesus. Yeah, when you repent, then we can talk. As long as you're killing people, yes. as long as you're destroying people, mm -hmm. as long as Satan is using you. If the church had prayed, Hitler would have been dead. They should have prayed harder. God would have killed Hitler before he mess up all the people. You think a man like that should have lived? He lived too long. Wow. Mm -hmm. Stalin lived too long. Mm -hmm. There's another one who killed six million Africans in West Africa. Huh? These type of people, the church was praying. In some of those African states, those leaders would not have risen up and did genocide, kill the people. Where's the church when those things were happening? Mm. Mm. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and has found them liars. Okay. Mm. Now this is Jesus talking, right? Jesus said, you look at people and say, you tried their works. And see, they no apostle. Don't get mad with me when I say the people ain't no apostle. Mm -hmm. And that's for every office. Jesus called the apostle. So if, you, if I see you, you try, you ain't no apostle. You ain't saved. Mm -hmm. You still lying, cheating, stealing. 
I saw a lady the other day. She ain't even in no church. She would call herself apostle. She break off from the church where she was doing her own thing. Now she's apostle. Come on, man. Huh? I can use that for every office. Use a prophet. Okay. When you got saved. So let's start with that. You know how you tried it? Okay, tell me. When you got saved. Okay. When you got filled with the Spirit. Okay. When were you baptized with water? When were you baptized with the Holy Spirit? When were you baptized with fire? What church you attend? Who's your pastor? Can I get a reference from your pastor? Uh-huh. How long you been going there? Do you pay your tithe and offerings there? Uh, you serve in a ministry there. Which ministry did you serve in? How long did you serve in that ministry capacity? Okay. Now, now you're a prophet. Who commissioned you as a prophet? Who ordained you as a prophet? Who released you as a prophet? Who are you accountable to as a prophet? I got 20 quick questions. And if any one of them is missing, you are not an apostle. You are not a prophet. You are not a pastor. You are not an evangelist. You are not a teacher. Now, you might have gone to Bible school, but where did you get any formal ministry training? Which seminars did you go to? How did what, where did you get some basic Bible training from? Where did you get some basic ministry training from? Uh, um, what's your position on the Spirit of God? What's your view? Give me five scriptures on salvation. Give me five scriptures on the Holy Spirit. Give me some, five scriptures on eternal life. Give me five scriptures on hell. Give me five scriptures on the doctrine of Christ. Who is he? You can't answer that. How in the world you could stand in God's holy house before his people on social media? See, I thank God God called me as a scientist pastor. Yes, sir. See, more, before he called me into the mm. full-time ministry, I think like a scientist. I don't just take anything over by the spirit. No, 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 no. I go through a systematic step. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me see, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you can't answer those questions, I've tried you already, and I've found you not to be an apostle. I've tested all those criteria. You might be able to fill out all of them, but at least 90% of them, you should be able to say, this is who I am, who I came from, blah, 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 blah. tell your testimony, and bring me your references. When you go for a job, they ask for what? References. So why when you want a job in the kingdom of God, you think you could just pop up and just God called me and I can do it? The devil is a liar. Paul said, when I went out and when the apostles perceived that I had the grace of God to go to the Gentiles and, 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 and Peter to, to the Jews, they extended unto me the right hand of fellowship. That's right. They said, is this the one who once persecuted the Jews? Now in the faith of Christ Jesus, Paul, as powerful as he was, had to go to Peter who was the established leader of the church and James and the other apostles. And when they saw and perceived what he was doing in the Gentile world, they were still skeptical of him because this is one who just finished killing Christians. But the man went into Arabia for 13 years to be processed, to be stripped of all those things. Then he came up back to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and for a few years the church was still watching him. And some head, they didn't want to deal with him. They said, man, this is set up. This man was just killing us, persecuting us. Yeah. And, uh, and, but when he told them about his encounter and how he met Jesus and how he was led and how he went into Arabia and how he was processed and how he got a revelation of Christ, Peter then accepted him and said, okay, now, right hand of fellowship. And he told him, now, only thing we want you to do is remember the poor and the widow. And he said, of this I was already doing. Yeah. Amen. Many have gone on their own authority. That's why they have no authority. Mm -hmm. Found them to be liars. Some prophets found them to be liars. Some pastors, oh, I can't say that. If you don't judge them, go to the church. Go to their ministry. And when they lay hands on you and put them devils that in there on you, in there... We do warfare. You know how many people we did deliverance on and had to cast the devil or what people lay hands on it? What you say? Because mm. you have no authority and you lay hands on someone. Everything that's in that person is transmitted. That's a spiritual act. Mm -hmm. You go into these uh, 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 um, services where the people they call the minute you hit the room. One time ago, 
Hallelujah. I had to do ministry to about five or six people who went to a particular church. They still operating now. Everyone was getting losing their mind. Why? Because the man was sweetheart on the first wife, and he was sweetheart for the secretary, and run off with the secretary, and everyone in that ministry was bewitched. Everyone. They were coming in through mental issues. Wow. Thinking it real. And who had mental issues was getting sick. All kind of incurable things hitting their bodies. Don't tell me this thing ain't real. Bewitchment. So turn back. Matthew. Bewitchment. Say bewitchment. Bewitchment. Mm, right there. In these last days, bewitchment is very high. I was reading a guy, Win Worley, who deals with deliverance. And he talked about so many deliverance. You would, hey, when you think about deliverance, you'll be shocked at the methods people use to bewitch and entangle people. You think it's only obey. It's mind control. It's manipulation. Mm -hmm. It's dictation. It's control. It's, he, he even talked about it, and I've seen it in my time, using the word, mm -hmm. using church, mm -hmm. using prayer, mm -hmm. using God, say this, to take people off the course of their destiny, to control them, to entangle them. Boy, in this last hour, you better be very careful. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The sin level is any sin. Iniquity is, I made a conscious decision to sin against God. So this sin is, I made a mistake. I missed it, took this towel. Transgression is, well, I took this towel for two days and I didn't return it back. Iniquity is, boy, every time I see a towel, I can teeth it and take it home. <laughs> That's what see. God judges you. Do you understand? God said, I can judge you for sin. God judged people for iniquity in my heart. I made iniquity in my heart. I mean, I made a mental decision. Boy, I sweethearted. I don't care what no one say. I don't care if my wife see it. I don't care if people talking it. I go in the fish fry with my sweetheart. And no, I don't care less. You could see me all you want. Iniquity is, <clears throat> I can teeth from people. And I can take their money. I don't care what you do and take me to court. I don't care. Doesn't matter. Iniquity is, I got bought, and it don't matter what no one say. Iniquity is, I can drink my liquor. I can smoke my dope. I don't care what no one say. This is what I do. Iniquity mm -hmm. is, I can play my numbers, and I can deal in the horoscope, and I don't care what you say, feel. I am not changing it because this is who I am. Yeah. That's iniquity. God said, I can judge iniquity. God hates iniquity. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. You know what iniquity does? Bows up your heart to even hear from God. That's right. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know why people prayers are not being answered? Iniquity. God said, I will not hear you with iniquity in your, head, in your heart. Most people you see going off from the faith, making dumb decisions, uh, 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 destroying their lives, is because of iniquity. They have no connection to the Holy Spirit. When you have iniquity, the Holy Spirit don't speak to you anymore. Oh, come on, help me. Yes, sir. Some people think, no, God is good. I just hear from the Lord, man. The Lord said this, the Lord said that. You know what the devil will do? Send false prophets in your life to tell you all kind of things. Oh, the Lord calling you. The Lord using your child. It's going to get better. Lies. You got iniquity in your heart. God doesn't speak to you. Fool yourself. The devil has deceived you. Mm -hmm. You have iniquity. You made a conscious decision. I will not obey God's word. I will not live according to his word. I can do my own thing. And I can fake my way through this. You might fake man, but you, you fake That's God. And you know what iniquity does too? The second part. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. My wife and I pray about this all the time. I found, you know what? There's some people who call themselves Christians. They so call. My wife and I, we pray every day. They say, oh God. Mm -hmm. Cold. Yes, sir. Apostle Dave, mm -hmm. I ran into this apostle. Man, we embraced each other, talked. I said, brother, let's meet on Monday. He come here today. 
His wife, they loved. How come? I said, boy, I'm so happy to see you. Man, my wife and I, she, every week she would say, man, we are Boston. I think they're in Nassau. I think they're in Nassau. I see something with them. They're in Nassau with the family in the knee. She kept saying that to me. I said, yeah, I can wait, man. Let me see. I, I know the sister. When I saw his, I said, well, how's the man of God? The sister said, no, she was staying with him. I said, God, he's fine. I know he's come around. You know where to find me. I didn't want pride. But when I saw him, I loved the man of God. I found that there are so many people, because they have iniquity, they can't love. No, see, There are some people, this storm hit, they ain't call their brother, sister, cousin, friend yet. I ain't talking about another place, you know, I'm talking about right on this island. They on the same island, they ain't checked for their loved ones yet. They ain't bring a can of soda yet. These people in church. Y'all know what I'm talking about, eh? I saw an ad in the paper. The hospital had to send out a notice to tell the people, please come and pick up your relatives. Yes, you saw it? I saw the paper with my own eye. I have the paper. Mm -hmm. That being the loved ones laying up there for, it don't be no one week, Andy. It's a social work right here. When they call you, boy, it's a couple weeks and they trying all their best. Can't no one answer the doggone phone. You're calling this one, that one, the cousin, the auntie, the mom, the pop, and they write in church every Sunday. He come up, 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 up. And they sick relative, they need the bed for other people. You can't even get them to get them to take the loved one home. And everyone is deacon and minister and pastor and prophet and prophetess. Right here, the storm ran through. There are some people in Nassau I ain't hear from yet. How about you? There are some churches I serve under and ministered and blessed. I ain't get a Coke soda yet from them. Then I ain't angry. But it just go to show you. Yes. See, when crisis come, you, you yes. see the love, man. Yes. You see the coldness. When crisis hit, apostle, you see those who love you, man. Yes. And anyone who, who has damaged, I think we're going to help. And we're going to raise some money and bless the man of God and whoever else. Why? That's how you live, man. You mean someone lose something and he, the Holy Ghost saying, tell you, give them a call? No, man, something wrong. Yeah. Iniquity. Anytime you see, my point is, anytime you see you have difficulty loving, you have sin in your life. Anytime you love, you have a clear pathway to the Holy Spirit. You, your heart is clean and pure. Yeah. If you find you're bitter, you have iniquity in your heart. A young man followed the apostles. We're wrapping up. And said, Apostles, please give me this gift so to whom I prophesy or who I lay hands on this anointing. Come on. Peter said, I perceive you are in the call of bitterness. You have a wicked heart. Yes. Your money perished with you. Yes. This was a saved man. He got saved. He was a wizard. He got saved. But then he's still Simon the sorcerer. He started following them. And he said, man, let me buy this thing from y'all. So when I lay hands, you know people still buying the anointing today? You know some people who go to witches and warlocks and get power, they go to marine spirit. Every gift you see, come on now, help me somebody. Every supernatural miracle ain't from the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Every prophecy ain't from the Holy Ghost. That's great. That's good. Devil can't cast out the devil, but what do you do with people who are bewitched? He take the sickness from the leg, the next couple months, it go to the heart. The demons are transferred from one part to the other. But what am I talking about? Love is cold. Watch this, read. But he that shall what? Endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. When you're in the kingdom of God, you cannot stop halfway. It's not good enough. What you did last year is not good enough for 2020. What you do this year, you're going to have to do more in 2021, should the Lord tarry. Why? This ain't about stopping short. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, don't stop short. Don't stop short. Say, go all the way. Oh. We got to go all the way to what? The what? Mm -hmm. End. Say the end. the end. Say the end. That's why God is building us. Man, last year I thought it was enough. This year God's squeezing me already. 
Ooh, come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, Lord, what are you doing? God said, I got to get you to the end. I, you asked me to take you to the end, I will take you to the end. What do I mean by the end? I, I, I keep asking God, process me, make me ready for when you come. You saw Kobe Bryant, I, want, I pray he was ready. Hey, Kobe, to God. You can have all the money, all the fame, all the fortune, be the greatest, and if you're not ready. Look at your neighbor and say, be ready. Be ready. Look at your neighbor and say, be ready. Be ready. Say, be ready. Great player, who didn't watch him. Love the guy's basketball skill. But will we be ready? I can't stop to think. So I look at his life. The man was worth, guess what? Half a billion dollars. Five hundred million dollars. How so much he was worth in his business and his assets. Five hundred million. And went on a helicopter and came down in five minutes and life was over. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how much remains they have. Imagine that. That shows us how vulnerable they are. We got to stay vulnerable in the hands of the Lord. We got to stay in this kingdom of God. And all that could come to my mind is what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose your one soul. Your one soul. How much is his soul worth? Can a billion dollars buy your soul? Can a trillion dollars buy your soul? Huh? You know how the devil is? He'll set you up, give you everything in this world you want. If you serve it, I'm not saying him in particular, but many, many, many in that arena, there's certain things they have to do to get to the top. There's certain backs. Hallelujah. Some of these singers, these rappers, these stars, we call them. We call them stars. Eh? God don't like that word, you know. Star is one that is exalted. I, what do you call them? Idol. Sports idol. American what? Uh-huh. Idolatry. And we sit down and watch American. Call them super. Modeling. Basketball. Football. Movie. Make them idol. I know. But at that level, they have to pay Lucifer price. Don't think it's don't think it's no don't, don't think it's a gimmick or a game. Mm. Saying, so say you want this? I want your blood on it. I want your soul. I want your soul. He'll give you it. Yes, sir. Many of them come out and confess they sold their soul for power, for money. Don't think the devil don't no no no. The devil don't want people like you and I soul like that. You want them who have greatest influence. So when the rappers, he said, yeah. Now he want everyone's soul. There's some people, the devil really want their soul. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when they get yeah. to that point, when they produce a song, to say, kill this one, and smoke dope, and snort cocaine, when millions head that, they put a spell on all those who listen. They're a greater witch than the ordinary witch. Amen? You have some household witches and warlocks, and you have some... Headquarter witches and warlocks. <laughs> some little local ones who just want a little job and want to take someone, a little husband and a little car and take someone's wife and put a little spell on a little someone and enchant a little church, a little ministry. Yeah, they do that. They can suffer, suffer not a witch that lie, live anyway. Them said need to die too. Yes. But there's some high ranking witches and warlock that you call stars, that you watch. You buy their tapes, you listen to them. Their, their film, you watch their movies, you watch their television shows, you admire them, you honor them, your children love them, they put up their poster in their room, they look up to them, they want to be like them, they aspire to be like them. Yeah. These are the ones who are bewitching the world with their music and their arts, and their crafts. And the same young basketball player just had a book out that teaches people magic. And the cover of it, it has a witchcraft symbol, and it's a book for children and teens that teaches them how to practice magic and witchcraft. The same one. You didn't know that, right? Look it up. Mm -hmm. And investigate that one. Mm -hmm. Six years ago, that one famous one stopped talking to his mother and father. 
because the family wasn't getting any support from him. And they wanted to sell a couple of little, you know, jersey when you leave your house and you get married. You have a couple of little things, you leave in the house. They wanted to sell it to make a couple of dollars on it. He sued them. All his final games, he didn't have them come. His last honoring game, he didn't even invite his mother, father, and two sisters. You didn't know about that family. They weren't even they weren't even at the wedding. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God has given thee. Amen. Amen. Many of those persons, you see them flashing all of these signs and symbols. You don't know what I mean, eh? They let the world know and the people know we are assigned to Satan. This is our symbol. It ain't no fairy tale thing. It ain't no conspiracy theory. You open your eyes, yeah? They slap people know by the symbolism, the signs, who they associate with, that we are a part of this elite demonic crew. That Satan is our master. That we serve Satan. That we, we, we believe in the ancient gods of Egypt. Yes, sir. We serve these gods. We get our power and our strength from Lucifer. Mm -hmm. You better wake up. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. We pay homage. And when Lucifer comes, he wants blood. Say blood. blood. Say blood. blood. Mm -hmm. Some things are blood sacrifices. I don't care what you say. I ain't no fool. Yes. You can take it how you want. Some things, depending on your level, some things the devil wants chicken blood. <laughs> Some things, the little them little demons want goat blood. Mm. Hallelujah. When you want more power, you want human blood. Hallelujah. Mm. And depending on how far you want, it will be the human blood of other people. Hallelujah. What you think all these killings are? The devils want blood. Demons want blood. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to be really great, then you sacrifice a close loved one. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Watch some of them. Every time they go into... You realm, a loved one suddenly dies. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden they get a special award. Or they come up with a best-selling album, a record, or best-selling music, or movie. It's a price you have to pay. Say, Lord Jesus, break the witchcraft. A sign against my life. You never know some people, the devil won't have a sign. I want that one. You want power? And you can tell the devil, the way I pray, he'll kill you first. Say that. Yeah. <laughs> kill me. You think I can stay with? What if Jesus showed me that? Uh-uh. I look in the Thursday paper every week for some people. Hey, Amen. Y'all go quiet. <laughs> I look in the Thursday paper. Uh-huh. You think everyone wants you alive? No. If they could sacrifice you, the devil will have them sacrifice you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom stand to your feet. This is what the devil hates most of all. When I talk about kingdom identity. What does it say? And this gospel of the what? Kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations. And what? And then shall the end come. Man, stop watching these movies and these YouTube videos that tell you when the end can come. Because Kobe died. That ain't the end of the world. It might be, but in a, Jesus told you when he coming. Amen? Amen. Hold on, Lord. Someone prophesied. Ah, oh, they had a dream of the end time. Okay, Jesus told me when he coming. God, a million people have a dream of the end of the world. Praise God. And that's going to happen. More and more, he's going to start warning people more. Hallelujah. You're going to have preachers like me and this man of God and this prophet and you people of God. You're going to start feeling something in your spirit too. The start saying, I got to tell my family, come to the Lord. I feel an urgency. I don't know why. And, and, and some of you, your plans are going to begin to change. Yes, sir. Man. 
Well, I wanted to build that house on the hill. All of a sudden, the Lord said, no, I want you to use your life and money for my gospel. Hallelujah. The, some change. Touch your neighbor say, some change is going to happen in your spirit. Uh -huh. As the end times are coming and Jesus is ready, hallelujah, all of a sudden, you can have an urge to tell your neighbor, your friend, your cousin, your husband, your wife about Jesus. You can have an urge to uh, give out tracts. You can have an urge to pray. You can have an urge to pray for the Lord. You can have an urge to be in the word of God. You can have a, all of a sudden on this earth to let go of everything hallelujah that was a distraction to your life you're going to have an urge uh, to put things right because the coming of the Lord is there Amen. Jesus said nothing Satan do don't mind the killing the murder the persecution against the church all around the world Jesus said a prophetic word this gospel of the kingdom so who's holding Jesus up Okay, I know we're done. Give me that music. Jesus said 2,000 years ago, after his disciples asked him, when are you coming? What's the sign of the end of time? He went through all of that to come to this. This gospel, which gospel? gospel the gospel of the what? The man reading your book. The gospel of what? Kingdom. The kingdom. Well, why are you always preaching the kingdom? This is why. Why we need kingdom apostolic? Because God gave me a revelation that the kingdom must be preached. And this gospel of love. And this gospel of grace. And this gospel of prayer meeting. And this gospel of faith. And this gospel of prosperity. Must be. Tell me what the man says. This is his Bible. This is his word. This is his church. This is him speaking. You don't got to go to no prophet to find out when Jesus is coming. You don't have to look at the earthquakes or the signs. It's coming. It's happening. You don't have to look at who dying and who living and who living. All this stuff that's going on and all of this thing. And this prophet said this. And this church is rising. And who oh God, you hear this boy? And Dorian, oh, the world is coming to end. Man, that that ain't have nothing to do with this. You and I are keeping Jesus from coming back. Every day we delay. So they laugh. But I put this on the media. And I start going in my pocket. I said, babe, whatever it takes. So I contacted some people. I said, we got to get this gospel of the kingdom on your station. And he said, all right, this amount. I said, babe, whatever it takes, we're going to pay Amen. So every day we come on Dominion TV. Hallelujah. Five days of the week, Monday to Friday. And we pay for that. And we got the same content every week. Hallelujah. And then we go on Kingdom Inside out of Canada. Then we on Power and Glory TV. Hallelujah. And I just heard from Kingdom Inside. He put it on the Kenyan. He sent me the clip on WhatsApp where we were live in Kenya. Hallelujah. On their television station. Hallelujah. Then another uh, Dominion TV called me. The owner, the owner. Hallelujah. Said, uh, we don't know why we're doing this, but uh, we're doubling your services. You coming on? 8.30 to 9.30, right before Dr. Bill Vincent. And we put me on, what time at night? One, I think one o'clock, midnight, uh, to capture. And that's all free. You don't have to pay. Hallelujah. Why? Uh, God began to expand and open up doors uh, for new nations. Why? Because the kingdom of God is the message that's holding Jesus from coming back. Well, come on, I need you to get it. I'm going to say it one time until it hits your spirit. Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Where? All the what? World and all the what? Nations. And then shall the end come. So if he said that, then if the gospel of the kingdom is not preached in all the earth, then what happened? The end will not come. Can I make that inference? And if people are not preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, then the gospel of the kingdom of God will not go to the nations until Jesus is what? Held up. So what message should we be preaching? Man, that's why I prophesy to people, but that, 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 that's low-level ministry, man. That's your neighbor say that's low-level ministry. Man, I can go around here and prophesy to everyone. Will that expand the kingdom of God? Not necessarily. I could go and lay hands on all the sick people. They get healed. Would that expand the kingdom of God? Not necessarily. 
I could go and do all kind of revival and talk about so many different things. Did that expand the kingdom? I could go in the Bahamas and keep preaching from one church to the other, and try to get a preaching engagement and get an honorarium. Is that expanding the kingdom of God in all the world, in all the nations for Jesus to come? Answer that, please. So what is the church? What, what do we want? That's why the topic today was kingdom identity. Who are we? What are we about? Where are we going? Are we going to repeat the last 10 years into this next decade? And I pray and I said, Lord, please rise up some kingdom preachers. Yes, yes. Come on, man. The Lord move this. Bless me. Yes, get a car. Get a house. Get a land. Yeah, you can get all that. You don't even need. All you got to do is be faithful to God. You can get a house, car, land, all that. You don't need. You, you, you don't need to waste your energy on that. I said, Lord, no, man. And that place I was talking about was South Africa. And they're right now at a conference with a hundred and almost three leaders. Yesterday, I did a conference with them talking about the kingdom of God. Most of them signed up for the kingdom of God. That's why we went to this place. I ain't gonna say it on TV because, of, and in every place, that's why someone was calling this guy to hang it up from the Middle East. I gotta talk to them. We have branches there strategizing the kingdom. In the place. That's why we got this on the site. You see, go on the Facebook, you see, little black boy. I can always say that when I go to them. From a place seven miles by 21. Grew up in the ghetto. 11 people in one house. But that doesn't matter to God. If he can get someone who is committed to preaching the kingdom of God to the earth, all of a sudden, invitations will come. Oh, you think I ain't worried about coming here? I ain't worried about trying to preach to these same people. This country that hey, enough gospel. Mm -hmm. The next level is moving from hearing the gospel to now being agents of the kingdom of God and now impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Unless yes. we can just be the same old cycling Christians yes, sir. year in and year out. Sure. Daily bread reading. Now I lay me down to sleep praying. Two song, one visit of the church, uh, hallelujah, a shout and a jiggle and a shout for the next 10 years. And we'll have no one that we could say we ushered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Let's close. Thank you. I'd rather evangelize and get one person into the kingdom of God than to prophesy to 10,000 people. That's good, good point. I'd rather get two who serious about Jesus Christ converted mm. into the love of Christ Jesus, calling us from the kingdom of darkness into his light than to lay hands on 10,000 people to be healed. Because I don't know if those people who got healed will ever rise up into that kingdom purpose, but I know the ones who got saved will. I'd rather preach to 10 kingdom-minded people than to the auditorium of a million people who just, just love us, who just have so many different opinions about the things of God. Thank you. That's why Jesus was more concerned about keeping 12 who would shake up the kingdoms of the earth. You know what he said? Father, you've given me 12 to pastor, paraphrasing, and I lost one, the son of petition, so that, you know, the scriptures might be fulfilled. He said, but that once you've given me, I'm presenting it back to you. Eleven. Yes. Yeah, the church of eleven people. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of you, I hope that encouraged you today. Mm -hmm. Eleven he discipled and called his church. This gospel. And I'm going to want you to say a prayer. Are you serious about the kingdom of God this year? You should have stayed home today if you're in on this. You're in trouble now. You heard this? You're in trouble. I'm not in trouble. What do I mean? In a good way. I'm accountable now. Now that I know. That's what all the other ministries are about to change. Today. Come on. Come on. Give the Lord praise. Thank you. Everything that you taught was important. I saw it just now in the spirit. Just Thank dropped you. off of you. Every plan you had for your money just dropped. 
and, and every lifestyle that you thought was okay just dropped. Amen. Everything you thought was a, a question you needed just dropped of you. Everything you felt said, boy, I ain't good enough, I ain't sufficient enough, my life isn't where I thought it should be, I don't have what I should have had, this, that, everything you were measuring your life up against other people, their house, their car, their education, their background, their commitment, everything you thought was important just dropped off you in the spirit. And I see in the spirit you just grabbed up this revelation today. Amen. Thank you. And I might come on, give the Lord praise. I might not have what the neighbor have. I might not have what Kobe had. I might not have what this star had. I might not even have what my neighbor had. But if I got the kingdom message, boy, God could take the kingdom of God in me and open the doors for me to touch nations. Hallelujah. God is going to surprise some of you today listening or watching. But this revelation, you know, the doors will be open. I thought the gospel of the kingdom was around the world. But we see China, 1.1 billion, still only... 10% Christian. Now we see India, 1.2 billion, 1.1 to 1.2 billion, uh, 70 to 75 percent still lost so we see pakistan five percent christian we see bangladesh we see Suriname. we see sri lanka still in the five ten percent christian we see nepal we see bhutan still only five percent christian we see uh, countries uh, throughout the middle east uh, locked into uh islam we see uh, africa many of the nations still under spiritualism and the occult and sorcery and witchcraft and ancestral worship uh, hallelujah and paganism still lost we see the caribbean with a form of godliness but still lost we see america that was once a christian nation now uh, struggling with christianity we saw europe that was one e once evangelized now becoming islamic states South America, Central America, tied into uh, Indian spiritualists, pagan worship, ancestral worship. You worry about a little piece of rock? Rise up in God, lift up your hands. Are you ready? 2020 and beyond, and God can get his hand on something new like you want to. Your tickets will be paid for. The stage will be set. People that you did not know and didn't know you, you will be the ones taking the gospel of the kingdom to those places and looking and saying, God, how did I get in this place? Come on, Father, right now, I thank you for everyone listening and watching. We thank you that your desire is to see your kingdom rulership in all the earth. Your desire is to see your glory fill the earth. Your truth fill the earth. The name and the knowledge of Jesus fill the earth. Lord, I put aside churchiness. Come on, pray. Lord, I put aside church activities. Hallelujah. Cookouts, steakouts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brunch, Sunday brunches, hallelujah. I put aside fashion show and comedy show in the church. And I get back to the work of the church of Jesus Christ, which is the preaching and the demonstration of the kingdom of God. The world must be discipled with the truth of the kingdom. What is it? Jesus Christ is Lord and God. And that he wants to restore humanity and creation back to him. Lord, I come in the name of Jesus. If this is your prayer, your Lord, use me. Huh? Come on, ask the Lord to use you. Come on, Lord, break everything that is a hindrance in my life. Come on, break it. Lord, I ask you to break every sin that easily besets me. Lord, break every struggle. Break every demonic mindset. Break every stronghold of the enemy. Break every attack of the enemy. Set me free in the name of Jesus so I can do the work of the Lord. Come on, shake yourself free. I set myself free from every false doctrine, false theology, false ministry, false working, false idea false prophetic word that through my destiny of course uh, I break off every demonic impartation every demonic laying on of hands every false teaching every false ministry every false word Lord God in my life in my city in my nation Lord I pray you to break that and bring the true church uh, bring the apostolic house uh, bring the house of kingdom people come on pray help me uh, come on Lord I ask you to break it off us now and bring us into liberty bring us into uh, 
your assignment. Lord, give me an identity in the kingdom of God. Let me see myself in your kingdom. Let me see myself in your work. Lord, give me the understanding of the kingdom that I may tell it to my family, that I may tell it to my friends, that I may tell it to my co-workers. Hallelujah. That I may tell it to my city. Lord God, hallelujah, that men, women, boys, and girls uh, uh, will be set free from the kingdom of darkness. Come on, let's break the kingdom of darkness. Lord, we break, come on, break the kingdom of darkness. Come on, begin to intercede. We break the kingdom of darkness of our life, of our family, of our home, of our city, of our nation. We break the kingdom of darkness strategy and plan against our government, our leaders. Hallelujah, the opposition, the church. We pray that the kingdom of darkness plan it's broken off the church, breaking off the people of God. Hallelujah. I pray every deception, every lie. And come on, let's break it up. There's some pastors under bondage. There's some apostles, true apostles under bondage. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that the witchcraft and the deception of the enemy be broken off the true apostles, the true prophets. I pray. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The discouragement be broken off of the true apostles and prophets who've been discouraged by the attacks of the enemy, who been discouraged courage uh, by the low turn out of the people of God hallelujah they feel that their labor has gone in vain hallelujah I pray for the prophets who prophesy who pray but hallelujah see the deception and see false prophets getting the following and deceiving the people Lord I pray for the pastors who be discouraged because hallelujah the enemy has attacked their body their marriage their family their homes hallelujah the weight is so heavy that they're being discouraged and want to give up Lord I pray for the sins of God in this house and listening and watching. Who Come on, pray. Who need to be encouraged? Who need to be uplifted? Who need to be strengthened, Lord God? Because the enemy has fought them on the job, fought them in the family, fought them in their personal mind, fought them in their bodies, wants to make them feel less than worthy, wants to make them feel unworthy, wants to make them feel discouraged. But Lord, give them a kingdom identity. Let them know who they truly are in you. Let them know who they are in the things of God. Let them know who they are in this end time that Lord, you are calling. Come on, lift up your hands. Lord, you are calling us, your people in this end time. Hallelujah. We might not know every scripture. We might not be in every Bible school, but we have the Holy Ghost and the power of God. We have the word of God. Use these people, Lord. I break the spirit of fear. The fear that makes them afraid to share the gospel with governments, their co-workers, to the city, to the nation. Lord, raise up these women women and men of God to do mighty exploits in these last days that so that your coming may be hastened Lord God uh, let them use every media form to hasten the work of the Lord let them use every avenue open the doors come and ask the Lord to open the doors Lord open up every door that needs to be open doors of finances doors of favor doors of ministry doors of grace uh, that will allow them to do the work of the assignment of the kingdom of God come on come on Lord uh, Lord settle their hearts settle their homes uh, settle their finances settle their their minds, set their hearts uh, so they're not distracted. Lord, I break every distraction of the enemy in the, come on, come on, break distractions. Uh, we break every distraction. Break every dis Every good idea is not a God idea. Lord, let every distracted thing Every distraction be broken so your people can be set free to do the work of the Lord. Lord, I pray for a mantle of prayer. Come on, lift up your hands. Jesus said, pray, now our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Lord, I pray that you put a mantle upon us to pray. You put a mantle upon us to pray the kingdom of God. We pray. Come on, let's pray for the kingdom to come. Lord, we pray the kingdom be upon the nations and upon the world. Lord, I pray that the doors of nations be open to the kingdom of God, come on. Lord, I pray right now. Come on, pray with me. The doors of the nations be open to the kingdom. Hallelujah. The nations be open. Countries be open. People groups be open. Ethnic groups be open. Let every nation open up to the gospel of the kingdom. Let every nation.
nation open up to the Spirit of God. Let every nation open up to salvation. We find every work of darkness over this nation. Come on, let's pray over this nation. Every spirit that wants to be witch this city and this nation be bind in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants to hinder the destiny of the people of God in the city, we bind it right now. Everything in the root of the city and the root of their nation, we bind right now. Every witch that said this church in this country will not prevail, we bind right now. Everyone that says these people will be in poverty and bondage, we bind right now. We bind racism, we bind sexism, we bind those who think they own this city, who own this, we bind them in the name of Jesus. Uh huh. I hear the Holy Ghost say, bind them. There are some people who think they own the city, you know. He bashata. The Lord said, there's some people who think they own the city, but the Lord said, let them know. And the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We bind huh? every people group, we bind every organization that thinks they own the city. And oh, come on, y'all get on your seat and begin to war. Hallelujah. That said, they control what happens, huh? they control the upbeat, they control they control the finances, they control the economics, they think they control the people, they control the money, they control the educational system, the healthcare system, they control the tourism, the devil is a liar, our God owns the city, our God owns this nation, the church is the spiritual authority in the city, and what we find on earth shall be bound in heaven, what we lose on earth shall be loose in heaven, and so I declare by the mighty name of Jesus that we declare our open heaven over the city. Over this nation, that the Lord God of heaven will arise. He called a revival, a true spiritual revival, that young men and young women will get saved and be delivered. We declare it. Hallelujah. We declare it that there is an opening of heaven, that jobs will come, that righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost will come. This is the kingdom of God in every home and every town. God comes with authority. Come on. The kingdom of God. We declare come with power. The kingdom of God comes with might. The kingdom of God comes with strength over the city, over this nation, over this land, over the church. The church will not be stopped. The church will not be hindered. The church will not be delayed. The church will not be stagnant. But oh God, arise the people of God with power, with might. Who will not be stopped? God, I thank you for the army of God that is being arisen right now. An army of God that is not hindered, not distracted and not forsaken in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say he's healing everyone here from the effect of Dorian right now. Dorian came to discourage hallelujah the weight the restoration is so intense that the intensity could have taken you off focus but the Lord said I'm covering minds right now I'm covering your heart right now. I hear the spirit of the Lord say, I'm going to take away your house, your home, your life, your well-being because of my kingdom purpose. I'm going to send help because you are committed to the work of the Lord and I need you free. I don't need you thinking about your house. I don't need you thinking about your home. I don't need you thinking about your family. The Lord said, because you heard this word today and you've committed to do the things that I've called you to do, I'm going to take care of you and I'm going to take care of you quickly. Come on, give the Lord praise. I'm going to take care of you suddenly. The Lord said, your finances. Hallelujah. Because you have a kingdom assignment, God said, I'm going to give you a house. And you know I don't prophesy about house and car thing. But it's in the right context. You know why? Because what God called you to do, you have to be in your house. God said, I caused some people to be driven out. And you can go and buy them right now for little or nothing if you wanted. Come on, give the Lord praise. Yes, Jesus. What you think this... What you think is uh, 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 concessions are? If you get a hold of what the Lord is doing, yeah, everything you need to be set up over the next six months will be set up for the kingdom of God purpose. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need a bus. We need a car. Hallelujah. You need for your life. Hallelujah. God is opening up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, so of that, they may be laughing, but guess what? For the next six more months. 
God has given us concession to do whatever we want to do at 50, 60 percent less. That's for the people of God. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. So materials that was going to build their house would have been a hundred dollars. When you buy them now, they drop $40 seats. I mean, you're going to save 60% on your house building it. Come on, give God praise. That's for somebody right now. Why? Because God wants to set your life. That car that they were paying NASA for, you get it? I don't know. Almost 60% less. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> that computer, that solar system, that water pump system, that church material, that family material, those items you needed, clothes you even needed, duty free. Come on, give God praise. Amen. It's because you are assignment. Hallelujah. 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 Father, right now I thank you for this time. And I repent for everything. The Lord is the Lord. I repent first of all to the Lord in front of you all. Sometimes we get so busy just trying to study and to advance academically and to advance professionally and Jesus. The hours and the time you spend online studying and researching all that, that's good stuff and God will use that as part of it. But in this season, oh God, I repent for every hour I wasted when I could have been praying for a nation. Is it that serious? Yes, only what you do for Christ will last. If I can spend 50 hours in the classroom, I know I'm studying 10 hours a time. Why can't I spend 50 hours in prayer? If I could go to work all day and then go to classes from 6 to 10, go home and spend two more hours doing the homework assignment, why can't I spend six hours in prayer? Amen. Praying for city, praying for nation, praying for region, praying for family. If I could spend Four hours in the classroom. Why can't I spend four hours teaching someone about the kingdom of God? Amen. If I need to give a hundred hours of internship time. Thank you. Or two hundred or five hundred hours. Why can't I spend a hundred? Thank you. Studying from Genesis to Revelation, the kingdom of God, learning it in and out so good. And when the Holy Spirit calls upon me, mm -hmm. there would be hardly anyone in this world who would know the kingdom of God like I did. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Shut up, Akande. Yay, said the Lord. Many look to, hallelujah, the man on the big network TV. God said you could do the same thing. They only preach it because they invested the time. But the Lord said, if I could get you. Some of you, if you would see the kingdom of God, from the Genesis to Revelation, every scripture on the kingdom of God. Thank you. And the Holy Spirit will give you a revelation on it. It won't be a person in this church. Thank you. Who you couldn't be on the same platform with. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Come on, come on. Yes. And you won't just get in the little church here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, God said, I'll put you on platforms. You want me to match? So, Lord, I repent. Have you wasted your time? Let's move forward now. Some 40, some 50, some 60, some 70, whatever your age, you could still be important to the kingdom of God. Yes. Oh, I can leave it for my children. The devil is a liar. You! God ain't finished with you. So, Father, right now we give you thanks and praise. As we leave this place, but not at your presence, let the power of the kingdom of God be upon every one of us through the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. Let the glory of the kingdom of God be upon everyone afresh. And we pray for a fresh zeal to go forth today. Say, I go forth today. Shall I go forth today in the power of the Spirit to take this gospel of the kingdom to the world and the nations? In 
Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Jesus Jesus name. Are you ready? Amen. Yes. Amen. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord. Yes. I didn't say clap your hands for minutes. I said for the Lord. I didn't say for Perry. I said for the Lord. Well, we love you in Jesus' name. Thank you. If anyone has any testimonies, come at this time quickly. Anyone want to share a testimony of what the Lord did or said while you're doing it, bring your tithe and offering and your gifts, please. Another way of blessing the kingdom of God is through your seed. Through your seed. What do I mean? Well, I can't help the thing if our dear brother who passed away 500 million. What if he had used 1 million of that for the gospel of the kingdom to go around the world? See how the devil is? Mm -hmm. He have some people with this money all tied up. Yeah. But guess what God does? Even though a lot of these stars and these people... I watched a documentary the other day that showed about 10 people who's richer than Bill Gates. I couldn't believe it. Who's living right now? Man of God. One is a famous leader of a country in the East. The guy worth 160 billion. A couple of them. I couldn't believe it. And a family, I wouldn't call it in, worth $1 trillion. Who's living now? $1 trillion. But what if we had that amount of money? The gospel of the kingdom would be in every nation. It would be easy to do. But guess what God has to do? Because of the faithfulness of God, you know what God could do? He could take that $100, that $50, and multiply it that it, it has the impact of $50 million. Mm -hmm. You know that? Yes, sir. How do I know that? Jesus took what? Five loaves of what? Two fish. Two fish. Two fish. <laughs> and feed 5,000 men and children. So if the man, each one of them had a wife, that's five and five, 10,000. And if they had two children each for family, that's almost 20,000, eh? Yeah. That's, how much percentage is that? That ain't 10%, 100%, 1,000%. You see how much percentage of it? Exponentially. Yes, sir. So God can take whatever you get, mm -hmm. multiply it, and cause it to have a harvest you wouldn't even imagine. Amen? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Stretch mm -hmm. your hand toward this. Father, we thank you. Apostle Dean, come, mm -hmm. come and bless this for us, please. Amen. Just share a word as the people of God. Father, we just bless you and honor you. We magnify you. We thank you for the hearts that give. The hearts of God that will give. We pray that you bless them all the same. And there's money with you to the footing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to be here in the house. Amen. Because as you're looking at this, the grace of God. Thank God to be Amen. here today. Look, you're looking at the goodness of God. Yes. You look at me just being a person. You're looking at me as being the mercies of God. Yes. Amen. Everything that he said in his word, it is true. Amen. And everything that the apostle have said this morning is true. Praise the Lord. Things are really yeah. happening. Yeah. Things are happening in the world, in the spirit world. And we are part of the spirit world. Yes. But we are just of a different kingdom altogether, he said. Yes. Being transformed and delivered from one kingdom to the next. Amen. That tells us that we ourselves were tired. Now that we are not tired, we are free. Yes. Amen. And seeing that we're free now, like he said, that now we need to uh, pray that this will go forward. The kingdom of God. Everything that God has lost through Christ for us. And he placed it within our hands. Amen. Because God was in Christ. Yes. Reconciling the world to himself. Now he have us. Yeah, it's his hands, we are his feet, we are his body. Amen. So therefore God is depending on each and every one of us. Amen. So thank God for being here. 
Amen. This morning, Apostle, God bless you. Great, great, great message that was delivered. Praise the Amen. It's not something that was just a letter, but it's really spiritual. It's life-giving. Praise the Lord. The voice that was spoken to us is spirit, spirit. and it's life. So I just want to thank God for being the Apostle. God bless you. Honor. God bless you. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Come back here, Apostle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to take these today. This man of God, I don't mean to put him on the spot, but it's the truth. Many people lost so much. This man of God lost his home, and they're in a rebuilding phase. And the Lord told me just to show that to you. You came, and so he didn't have to come. I didn't ask him to come. We were supposed to meet tomorrow to sit and talk, and I didn't know what, I didn't know what the Lord was going to do. But he came. He humbled himself. You know, I saw him. The Lord said, do something for him. I don't know how much that is. It don't matter to me. Amen? Hallelujah. Whatever it is, uh, that's something to the water. And I can call you. Mm -hmm. We can still talk tomorrow. That's how we got to do. Amen? Amen? If you want to do something special for this apostle, come to him. I'm not going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. If you have a special gift or pledge, it's Dallin White Prophetess Dean, you know, from the food stall. They've been my friends for 10, 11 years from when I first got back here. They took me in. If you have a special gift, grab something quickly. Let's sow into this apostle's life. If you don't have it, raise your hand and say, I pledge to do it, and I can be after you for it. I'm going to pledge something to this man of God. You're going to pledge something for you. Okay, very good. Anyone else want to give something now? I'm going to pledge. Amen. He's out of his house. He had to go to Nassau for a season. He came back, and they're still doing repairs on their home. He's a faithful man of God. That's good seed. Amen. Amen. This is Amen. good seed. He is a man who's kept a good name. Amen. Good character in yes. this city for many years. I like that. Amen. Amen. Right. And men and women of God have kept a scandal free name. Amen. That ain't easy. He's a prayerful man. He's a good Amen. man. So do me a favor. Your wife is still at the store. Yeah. Probably be at the store. Mm -hmm. The fish, the fowl, come in that store. The fruit store the fruit. opposite <laughs> city market. Yeah. Yeah. Agriculture. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can bring it to me today, go to the stall and put it in this hand. I don't Amen. need. I don't need. Go, please. If you pledge, go to the bank today. Tomorrow, go to the stall, put it in an envelope, and say, "This is my pledge, <laughs> the apostle." And then some. You have your own repairs to do, but stretch yourself. Amen. I have some stuff I'm doing. I can stretch myself. And let's let's do this out of love. Amen. Amen. Let's show the devil that uh, we don't have iniquity. Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 Prophet, come, I want you just to speak a word. Just a, mm -hmm. a, a it, thing. Come, just speak a word of prophetic over the man of God. And then anyone with any other testimonies. Amen. Thank you for your giving. Amen. Bless, bless the people of God. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Go ahead. It's good Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. And I just bless God for my space here this afternoon. Give God praise for everything is my own mm. you know i realize that we are in the last of the last days yes. we're in the end times yes and you know i just bless god i often share from time to time when they come in contact with even my colleagues they say listen this is a time when you, you need to know god Yes, sir. Yes. yes, that's good. You know, people begin to speak and they say, all these strange things are happening. Yes. This morning when I came to work, I said, these, we are in the end times. Yes. And you need to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. And I said, even if you know me, you need to get closer to Him. Amen. Yes. Because we are in the end times. That's true. You know, so I just bless God for what He is doing through the people of God, through His man servant, Dr. Cody, Apostle Cody. You know, bless God for you, sir. Continue to be encouraged and strengthened in the Lord and all of God's people. All of God's people, all of you are special in, in the eyes of the Lord. You know, don't take what is going on in your life for granted. You know, God really being dealing with particularly your about His coming. Yes. You know, His coming is soon. I, I Very saw, soon. A few weeks ago, I saw him, I saw him, the angel, the archangel holding a trumpet. Ooh. Mm. Just out his mouth. Shuni yabaku, urababasata. Let me tell you something, people of God. Jesus. You know, the Lord is so to come. That's when I sat. I just was amazed. Um, Apostle Coley was talking about, you know, Matthew twenty-four, 
we are very close. Yes. We are very, we are very mm -hmm. close. Yes, sir. And I encourage the, the body of Christ to stay on the wall. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, to stay connected to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Lord is, let me tell you something, it's coming so soon. Let me tell you something, yes, Jesus sir. Christ is coming back in our generation. Right. Yes, I believe Make that. no mistake about yes. it. Yes. Yes. You know, and one thing the Lord shared with me, he said, many shall be left behind. Ooh. And not, not the word per se, but the, the word that doesn't know him, talking about church people. Mm. Oh, God. Amen. The Lord showed me, he gave me that revelation. He said, Ooh. many shall be left behind. Jesus. This is a time for us to continue to humble ourselves mm -hmm. before the Lord. Because let me tell you something. God is getting ready to visit this nation again. Oh God. Oh Lord. Oh, Lord. And after he visited this nation, the Lord shared with me on, on Monday, last week, Thursday night in, in Nassau. I was I was ministering at a local church there. And the, the Holy Ghost shift the entire service. Amen. The entire service, the Holy Ghost just shift the entire service. The Lord began to speak prophetically. Concerning what he's going to do in the nation. And the judgment that, that is coming to the nation because the people have gone whoring after the gods. What mm. about And after the Holy Ghost had spoken, he said that then the end time revival shall come. After he would have judged this nation one more time. Mm. So, you know, let's continue to mm. be obedient to the Spirit of God. People of God. Mm -hmm. Very important for us to be obedient to the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. To stay connected to people who are walking with the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, yes, stay connected to, let me say that again. The, the Lord wants you to say that again. To stay connected to people who are walking mm -hmm. with the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much deception, man, of God. Woo, glory. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It's great. That is taking place. And this deception is an end time spirit. Yes, it is. And the Lord said, Take heed that no man deceive you. He was addressing the spirit of deception. Amen. Mm. Which is a last day spirit. And we're yes. seeing it in every facet Absolutely. of life. Mm. You know, deceive people of God. Mm. Remain prayerful. Amen. More importantly, remain prayerful. Amen. Stay walking in love. Amen. You know, love covers a multitude yes. of sin. Yes. You know, I just bless God for, for what he's doing in the lives of his kingdom people. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I really truly I truly bless God, man of God. And you continue to pray for me, people of God. Yes. As I pray for you, you know, we have to continue to help each other. Yes. Hold each other up. Yes. Yes. Because let me tell you something. You talk you said something earlier about iniquity. Mm. A lot of persons are walking in error. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. They have no love in their heart when you know they go yes. into church. Yeah. Mm. You know, and I, I, I ask God every day of my life to create in me a clean heart. Yes. And to renew a right That's spirit within me. Let me tell you something. God has called me to be a prophet, yes. Yes. But you know something? I don't like to prophesy, man of God. Can I be real? Yes. I don't like to prophesy. You know why? Because we live in in in, in a world today yes, where yeah. people have itchy ears. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. So I believe in speaking the, the word of God. Ah, yes. Amen. Yes, 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 you know, I'm a truth. preacher too. I believe in, in speaking from this word. If God moves me, the Spirit of God moves me to prophesy, then I have to. Yes, of course. But, yes. You know, I, I, we, we, it's great deception going on. So what you, say, what you, what you said today, I know it was from the throne room of God. Praise God use you some. Continue to mm -hmm. speak the word and to preach the word in season and out of season. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you know, a lot of people are not speaking truth today. Mm. You know, and I, 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 I encourage the body of Christ to continue to speak truth. Mm. Yes. Truth. The truth of the word. Mm. Jesus said, you shall know the truth mm -hmm. and the truth shall set you free. free. Yeah. So I bless God for what He's even about to do in our nation. Yes. You know, to even in our government, mm -hmm. even on the police force, even on the defense yes, force, yes, the prison yes, department. Yes. I bless God for what He's going to do in the educational system yes. in our country, even in our schools. I, I I bless God for what He's about to do because He's going to move. Yes. I sure He's going to move as sure as 
night follows day, the Lord is going to move in every facet of society in our country. Yeah. I bless God because, you know, you, you said something earlier about Kobe Bryant's death. Mm. And the Lord showed me, he said that was a sacrifice. Mm. Go ahead now. Amen. That's what the Lord dropped in my spirit. He said it was a sacrifice. I should have from last week. He said it was a sacrifice because of what he, what he was entangled in. It was a sacrifice. But you know, let's continue to, rem to remain true to God, people of God. Let's continue to love one another, to encourage one another, Hallelujah. to be there for each other. Mm -hmm. Pastor, God bless you, people of God. God bless you. Woman of God, prophetess, God bless you mm -hmm. today. Yes. Continue to be encouraged. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
fate to endure. As we take the Lord's table today, I want us to pray again just to make sure our hearts are clear. For Paul said, many took up the Lord's table unworthily and came under a damnation. And many sleep because they took the Lord's cup unworthily. So let's pray and ask the Lord just one more time. It's a holy thing. It's a precious thing. And all who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have the right to take the Lord's table and partake of his body and blood. It unites all of us around the world as believers in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> his body becomes our body. His blood becomes our blood. And so we bless it and we take it together. Body of our Lord Jesus, let me serve you. Body of our Lord Jesus, amen. Let you serve the people of God. Thank you. We'll take it together. I see you would have been served. Amen. The Bible says, as often as you do this. So that means some of you, I encourage you to get the body and blood and take it home. Sometimes I call the family together at home and we take it together. Amen. Take it as often. Let's take the Lord's body together. Lift it up unto him. Body of our Lord Jesus. Wait, the pastor. We wait on you. Okay. Wonderful. Let's eat together the Lord's body. Likewise, his precious blood that cleanses, that washes, and makes us whole. Let's lift up that blood, the blood of the New Testament, which was paid for all of our sins, that we could be clean and free today. Let's partake of it together in Jesus' name. Pastor, would you collect these, please? Come on, let's celebrate the Lord's body and blood today. Come on. Amen. Thank you. Come on, let's worship him. Thank you. Come Mighty on, come God. on, come on. Thank him for his Hallelujah. blood. Hallelujah. Stand your feet with us. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Encourage one another before you leave. Oh, the blood of Jesus. We love you. We bless you. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes. In the blood of Jesus, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Come on, that washes my hands. Today, when I love you deeply, we celebrate you. Thank you for coming. You could have been anywhere, but you decided to fellowship with us. Pray for us as we pray for you. We really do pray for you. Amen. Thank you for supporting this ministry. We just got these banners. Excuse this. We wanted to do something because we are recording because we're going to take the gospel of the kingdom to the world. Amen? Amen. And if you have a message, please let us know. We would love to have you share and record you. And this is a church slash studio area. So we want to record you. And, and we have the cameras and we get it edited. We, you have to see the show. Hallelujah. We have so much to do for the Lord. Please help us as you feel led. Please sow into this. Amen. This is just what we're doing for back up. So excuse this. We're trying That's to do right. some new things. And we came in a late. But thank you for your support and your prayers and your love. Greet each other. Love each other. Bless each other. And buy someone lunch today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> buy someone what? Lunch today. Or take someone, someone, lunch today. God bless you. Amen. Boys of blessing.